But actually, we still have one more slam to conclude. And actually, I'm also very happy that we also have a male participant tonight uh, uh, here. Please, Puneet. And he's going to tell us sure. how we're all connected. Stage is yours. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Puneet. And today, I'm going to talk about connecting via Skype. Back in my research center, they call it as resource allocation and difference mitigation, blah, 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 which pretty much actually means connecting via Skype. So let's stick to that. So before I start, I want to ask a question. What do you think is a basic human right? Some of you might say food. Some of you say water. Some of you say clothing. She might say mathematics. But 83% of the people agree that internet should be considered as a basic human right. So why is internet so important? Do you know what happened on Monday, 4th of October, 2021? <laughs> you saw people walking on streets like zombies because Facebook, what is that? WhatsApp and Instagram was down, right? So, OK, on a serious note, do you know what happened when Corona happened? Like millions of students could go to school from home. How sweet is that? And lakhs and lakhs of people could work from home. And that saved a lot of jobs. And that saved the uh, global economy. And the most important, when you were sick at home, you could talk to your family and loved ones miles apart from you. Internet is beautiful, right? So I would say we all are privileged. Why? Because we are connected. In these big cities, we are connected all thanks to these kind of antennas, which is mounted on uh, big towers and buildings, you know, with 5G, 4G, and 3G technologies. So you are privileged. But what about that kid who sits in a third world country and he's seeking education? And what about that lonely sailor He's in the middle of a sea and he wants to uh, send a beautiful picture of a sunset to his daughter back home? Or what about that lonely husband who wants to send a text message or make a call to his wife? I know you won't believe in such husbands exist, but they do. <laughs> okay? So all these people are not privileged, but they can look up because up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky, we have, wait for it, Wait for us, ta-da, satellites. And satellites can connect you to anywhere, if you, wherever you are on, on this planet Earth. If you can just look up, you're connected. But we have problems, so that's why we have jobs. So I'm going to explain five different problems and solutions very quickly. Problem number one, the users kept growing. You know what happened from 2010 to 2020? The users grew from 2,000 million users to 5,000 million users. So how do we satisfy such great growing demand? We just launched more satellites, right? So that's what we did. We kept on launching more satellites. You can see in the plot that the satellites kept launching as if like they're launching like a rocket. The graph looks like a launch of a rocket, right? But this created problem number two. That is, space is getting crowded. You know that? Leo, Mio, and Geo, that's low Earth orbits and geo, medium Earth orbits, and all these orbits are very badly crowded, right? And by the end of 2029, we're expected to have 50, 57,000 uh, satellites in the space. So space is a really crowded space. So they said, OK, launching more satellites is also more expensive. It's not like what Dr. Zainz did. You know, it's very, it's very difficult to launch a satellite. It's a lot of money cost. So they wanted to reduce it. So they said, come up with something else. So we came up with multi-beam satellites. So what is multi-beam? So I'm going to explain with this beautiful diagram I drew, copyrights reserved by art by Puneet. So you can say that there's a huge pipe. So the person behind has to wait for the per first person to finish drinking. Whereas in the second drawing, you can see even though the pipes are small, both of them can ring together, right? That's what we did with multi-beam satellite systems. Instead of having one big beam, we started to have multiple you know, smaller spot beams. But having multiple smaller spot beams solved the problem of solving, um, serving more users. But it created one more problem, that is interference. So that comes to a problem number three. So before explaining what is interference, I want to explain what is not an interference. So you have satellite, you have Alice, and you have Bob. Okay? The satellite is going to send hit to Alice. It's going to say stop to Bob. So because Alice and Bob are very far away, so Alice is going to understand it as a hit. So it's a successful transmission. But what happens in interference case? So satellite is there. It's going to tell hit to Alice. It's going to tell stop to Bob. But 
Do you know, when the Alice is going to receive the original signal S, I mean hit, and then the interfering signal, that is S, going to come here, and it's going to look like what? <laughs> if you guys missed it, you know, it looked like this. So, we have to stop interference somehow, so we came up with this technology called pre-coding. So pre-coding is that monster which is going to kill interference. So how does it work? So before sending hit, the satellite's going to think, OK, if I'm going to send hit, this is going to happen. You know, Al is going to understand that it as, you know. So let me send something else. So he sends this, hit divided by s. OK, stay with me. What do you mean by hit divided by s? So the moment uh, satellite sends hit divided by s, what's going to happen is the satellite is sending hit divided by s, and then the interference signal is s. So the s and s cancels, and Alice is going to understand it as a hit, right? Do you guys get it? Yeah. Yes. So that's awesome, right? So we are canceling the interference. So this is a very nice technology. So this solved a lot of problems, but we still have another big problem. That's called uneven demand. So what's an uneven demand? You can see in the picture, obviously, my drawing skills are improving. So you have more number of people on one side, and you have less number of people on the other side, but the pipe can only provide the same amount of water. Right? So on one side, people are having too much water. On the other side, people are fighting for water. Right? So this is what is exactly happening here. The more users at one place, the less users on the other side. So there is uneven demand. So for this, we came up with this beautiful uh, uh, solution called power adaptation. So what is power adaptation? We take a pump and put it there. You know, that's a beautiful solution where we pump more water where more people are there and less water where less people are there. That's what we did here. We transmitted more power to the beams which had more people and transmitted with less power to the beams which had less people. That's it. So with that solved all the problems, no, we have still have problem number five. This is the most beautiful one. Listen to me. It means that the users are moving, and they're moving very fast. So imagine, remember the previous figure be before? These users are not stationary. You know, They keep running from here to there, from there to here. So what do you do? So this picture is very important, the one on, on this side. OK, so this is a real uh, positioning of ships. So as we speak now, imagine those are the ships which are moving in Atlantic and Mediterranean Sea you know, in real time. So because they're moving, they're going to move from one beam to other. So there are places where there is more number of users, and there are places where there are less number of users. So for this, we came up with a brilliant solution. I came up with this brilliant solution. It's called, if you're going to increase the dimension of the pipe or decrease the dimension of the pipe based on the demand. For example, if there are more number of people there, we make that pipe bigger. Or if there are more number of people here, we make this pipe as bigger, right? That was cool, was it? OK, OK. So, OK. <laughs> so this is what happened after me. So you see, before and after. Before, it was boring fixed beams. And afterwards, you can see my beams are very moving. And they're moving actually where the users are. It's getting bigger and smaller based upon their user positions. Right? That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Love myself. OK. Any other problems do we have? Yes, we obviously have more problems. And that's what my EOS of PhD is all about. If you want to know more about it, you should come to my defense next year. OK? <laughs> so before I go, I want to end with a free wisdom from an ancient Sanskrit Hindu text from, which I, from where I come from, OK? It says, blah, 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 OK? I can't read Sanskrit. So, but uh, <laughs> however, I can read English, so I can read this for you. He is mine, and he is other, is a thought of a narrow-minded people. But for noble people, the entire world is one family. And my job as a researcher, along with the University of Luxembourg, is to make sure that this family stays connected. Thank you.